Full power Gloucester Gladiator from Durafly. Oh, nice. A little bit of rudder. Hello and welcome to HobbyKing.com. My name is Stuart and I'm here at the start of this new year to bring something that you haven't seen for a very long time from Hobby King. It's a brand new release from Durafly and much in keeping with the uh, early traditions of Durafly, it's quite an unusual model. It's 1100 millimeters, it flies on a 2200 and it is a Gloucester Gladiator. Now the Gloucester Gladiator, for those of you that don't know, is somewhat of a left of field choice much like Durafly before with the Sea Vixen and Vampire and some others, um, but it's not without its charm. And this is a early World War II uh, fighter plane, and in fact, the last biplane to see active service as a fighter during World War II with the Allies. Now, the scheme that you see applied on this uh, Gladiator, this is a pre-war scheme from 1937, RAF scheme. Actually, out of the box, much like uh, previous Durafly releases as well, this comes painted, but without the decals applied. You do get these decals supplied, but it is painted in this uh, primer silver, if you like. Uh, what that means, if you choose to, you can either apply the supplied decals, which are um, vinyl types, or you can choose your own scheme, paint on top of the silver as it is as a base coat, or there are many other schemes out there from other nations as well, such as uh, Denmark and other RAF schemes that use this base silver. So much like, again, previous Warbird releases from Durafly, it comes out of the box painted, but without the vinyl decals applied. Now these vinyl uh, decals are applied, they're self-adhesive, and they need a little uh, bit of encouragement with the adhesion, and you need to use the uh, covering iron technique. And if you're wondering how that works, check out the link below this video, and we'll show you the uh, Durafly Spitfire and P40 video, so you can see how to apply those decals. Um, but the model, in terms of spec, is 1100 mils, so that's right on the money of the traditional a Durafly Warbird size. It is running on a 2200, but this is a 2200 four cell, not a three cell, but a four cell. With the very, very short nose of the Gladiator, we needed as much weight forward as we could get, but also with the additional drag of the extra wing and the supplied uh, uh, scowl looking rigging wire, you need that much more power to get it through the air in a nice manner. Now, speaking of how it flies in the air, it does fly very, very nicely. Uh, it's got some extra power, more than scale for sure with the 4S, but that means it becomes that much more of a scale model, more of a sports aerobatic model if you want it to be, but you can slow it right down and it'd be a really, really nice scale fly because the Gloucester Gladiator was not fast. In fact, that's one of the things that really worked in the favor of the Gladiator. It could um, outmaneuver the much, much faster and superior BF109s, for example, where they were used uh, in uh, Malta and in the desert to uh, a, a, some degree of success. Uh, in the early part of the war years. Now, out of the box, it comes uh, with the wing, two separate wing panels. It comes with the, uh, the interplane struts that clip in, and it comes with a, a screw-on tail. Now, the additional rigging wire that you see on the model here, that is supplied in the box, and if you want to go the extra mile and add that for the full authentic look of the Gladiator, the full size did have this rigging wire, then you certainly can. It takes a little more time, but I think it's worth it, because if you look at it, it's a really, really stunning finish with that rigging wire on. However, if you need to take the model apart for transport, um, if you keep off the rigging wire and use the wing struts as they are, they are just clipping, so you can take it apart, but it's 1100 mil, it's a biplane, typically at this size, and it's been designed with that in mind. You can fit this in your car all in one piece. So the approach with the uh, Gladiator is that once it's assembled, it's assembled. You don't need to take it apart again, even if you choose to ins uh, install the included scale rigging wire. Now, in terms of access, I've talked about the battery. This is the 2200 Forest that we're gonna be flying it on. Much like many of its Durafly forebears, this has a canopy hatch, comes off very easily, magnetically held, and the battery, 2200 Forest, just slides all the way forward. Now, I'll tell you a little backstory. When we were, I'll turn it around as I do it so you can see inside, when uh, I was developing this model, uh, I didn't develop it from scratch, but I did inherit this development. It had some issues, and one of those issues was the uh, battery um, configuration, the tray that had been made for this. 
it was just overly complicated and easily added too much weight and cost. So we've gone for a very, very simple approach with the Gladiator and simply what it is, it may seem a little crude, but it works very, very well. It's just a simple piece of foam. Slide the battery in all the way forward as far as it will go. There's a foam ledge here on the fuselage. Put the foam between the battery and that foam ledge. And we've tried it many, many times in many, many orientations. This battery is not going anywhere with a simple but very lightweight and very secure piece of foam holding that in place. Uh, if I tip it over, you'll see it's got lots of room for the other electronics. We've got a small six channel receiver. You've got the your two servos for the elevator and rudder and there are two servos in the aileron. In total, four nine gram digital servos in the Gladiator. And apart from the electronics, the only other thing to mention is the motor. This is a 3719 770 kV brushless outrunner, and it's got a Durafly 40 amp speed controller. Uh, speed controller and motor, of course, with the short nose, as uh, they are installed as far forward as possible, because CEG uh, is, an, is a concern with a short nose model such as that. Speaking of which, you'll see in the quick setup guide that is included in the manual that the uh, CEG is approximately about here, which I think from memory is around 65 millimeters from the leading edge. I could be wrong with that, but we'll show you the quick setup guide now uh, for the correct measurements, but that's where you wanna be with the CEG. That's the technical talk of it. We talked about the CEG, we talked about the model itself, other than the, the pure scale detail. Again, much like the Durafly BF109 or the uh, Durafly Spitfire, we've tried to put an emphasis on detail got the rigging wire included that we mentioned. There's also lots of nice um, detail on this fully molded solid plastic uh, cowl and dummy engine there. Uh, and then on the undercarriage, you see lots of nice details and finishes there. And the exhaust, there's plastic exhaust underneath. All in all, you've got a great clean canvas to really go to town with weathering if you'd wish to as well. Obviously it comes out of the box clean and painted like this, but with a little bit of weathering, those details will really, really come out. So that's about it for here on the bench. What I'm gonna do now is take the new Durafly Gladiator out into the field. This is grass field. Show you how it handles the grass, show you how it flies in the air, both slow and fast, and uh, really ring this beautiful model out from Durafly, and it's the next release, next Warbird, 1100 mil Durafly Warbird, coming to all warehouses. Now, let's go fly. Okay, so if you're observant, you'll see that it's a lot sunnier than it was a moment ago. We've come back the next day because uh, the sun set and it wasn't great, but now look at this glorious weather and look how the Gladiator is glinting in the sunshine. So this is the next Durafly Warbird release, 1100 mil Gloucester Gladiator. This is fully rigged up with all the uh, included rigging wire. So it's gone for the full scale effect. Now, if you come closer, something that I wanted to show you um, that I was talking about before. So battery hatch. Very, very simple battery mechanism. It's just simply a foam block. And if you look down there, you see that? You've got yourself a 2200 4S all the way forward. Very simply, that foam block goes in there, keeps that secure, and it has not come out. If uh, I can tell you that uh, when we, this was being developed, he had a very, as I mentioned earlier, had a very complicated and overweight uh, battery system that was completely removed. And I found that when I was testing it, I was just using a foam block and I realized, actually, this is really simple and it works. So, ta-da, you now see it in production. Whilst you're down here, you can see the grass is quite long and it's wet. It's winter here right now, but you'll see um, when you handle it right, which is, you know, good use of elevator, it will uh, cope absolutely fine, even off wet, long grass like this. So I'm gonna take you through the flight on this 2200 4S. It needs the 4S because it needed that additional weight up front, but because of the extra drag, you don't really see it as fast, but for a Gladiator, it's certainly fast. We ready for takeoff? So you wanna be full up elevator until the, uh, the towel, towel lifts. All right, I'm gonna take off. This is all in low rates, apart from the elevator that is on mid. Holding up full up elevator, get it rolling. And then as you increase the power, you ease off the elevator. A little bit of right rudder. There we go. That's nice. How's that? Very nice. A little bit of trim. You're gonna bring it around. It's a small model, um, although for a biplane with two wings, it always looks like it's got a, a lot more bulk to it. Just trim a little bit, a little bit of right. There we go. How's that? Lovely. Cruising past, just under half throttle there. 
get a few beauty, beauty shots for you guys. Very, very nice and benign in the air. Look at that. Third throttle. Looking good? Very good. Now look at this stupid amount of power. This is a Gladiator, remember? If we had had power like that, this thing would have served into the Cold War and beyond. But it isn't in real life. But it's great to have that in reserve in the model. So I like to cruise with this thing probably around um, half throttle most of the time. Keep it as close to scale speed as possible. Do another below half throttle pass now because it's, for me, it's really about just drifting around like this. A little bit more power, rock solid there. Look at that. Oh, it's so nice glinting in the sun. It's like a beautiful piece of precious jewelry. I'm gonna loop uh, just over half throttle can be nice and round if you like it, but remember it's a scale biplane. Now, it's a World War II biplane at this. Now, if you don't know your history, um, pretty much the Gladiator was the last uh, fighter to see service uh, in World War II, biplane fighter. In fact, one of the last biplane fighters of all times. It served with the Allied Air Forces, notably with uh, the RAF, and with distinction in, for example, North Africa and Malta. This scheme is based on a uh, pre-war scheme from uh, 1937, I believe it is, and a full size flies in this scheme out of the UK now in the Shuttleworth collection. So there's a little bit of background for this model. It does come out of the box with uh, the stickers not applied, so you can choose a different scheme if you wish, either painted up in a camo scheme or another silver scheme, such as a Danish scheme or a Swedish scheme. And let's take it up now and show you it in uh, stall configuration. So I'm going to take it up and you will see pretty much that it does not stall. It took quite a lot of re-engineering to get this model uh, flying uh, well. It wasn't when I first got my hands on it, but it's since had a lot of time spent on it and it's flying very, very well now. Okay, so I'm going to go full up elevator. We're on, good on camera? Got it, yeah. Full up elevator. And I'm just going to keep riding like that. Now, if you can zoom out, can you zoom out? Give me a second, let me get that stall in sight. And you can tell by the controls. All right, well, I'm holding full up there, yeah. and it does nothing. A little tricky to get on camera. It really does nothing. So it's very, very well behaved. Now, also, I can show you what it does, which your Gladiator never does, is knife edge. <laughs> it does it well. Now, this it does it really, really well. Minimal coupling, completely non-scale. Fun, though. Yeah, but a lot of fun, and that's the thing. Scale is good to a point that it's practical and fun, and this is both of those things. Practical in that you can keep it fully rigged and assembled because it's an 1100mm biplane, and fun because you can do a really nice height knife edge with a glossy gladiator. I think I'll bring it around and keep it in knife edge. You ready? Alright, so it's not just purely for the scale buffs. If you want an unusual looking sports model, how's that? Look at that! Nice. Really, really rock solid. But it's not an aerobatic model as such, it's a warbird. So let's try and fly it a little more scale. There we go. And for scale speed, I mean, we say scale, but it's objective. I think that's about the right speed. And of course, cruising at half throttle as you do most of the time, well, as I find I do most of the time, means you get really long flight times on this 2200 4S. So that's a good, that's half throttle. You can, of course, fly it on 3S, but you need a bigger 3S pack. That uh, noise you can hear, there's a slight reverberation. That's one of the uh, flying wires at a certain throttle set setting. It will make that noise. But look at this, the slightest coordination in the turns. And it's a pussycat. Let's try a touch and go. It has got a short nose, and what you've got to keep in mind is you need to be ready on the elevator. And you also need to keep some speed up. So I'm going to flip into mid rate on the elevator, and I'm going to fly it onto the deck and do a touch and go. You ready? Ready. Keep some power on, keep some power on. And then flare, flare, and then away she goes. She almost wanted to, uh, grass, gra well, the grass almost wanted to grab her, but I managed to get on the power and save it there. Do a loop off of this. Do a more kind of like neat eye of the needle kind of loop, which is far more scale than the big loops that you can do. Let's take it up and do a bit of a spin, shall we? I'm in mean, high right. rates now. Are you ready? Got it. Okay. Just kind of go into like a spiral as it were and then just let go of the sticks and out she comes. Another one of those? Nice. I am not so good of a pilot that I can get a model into flat spin. I just have uh, years of stick time. Doesn't mean I'm a particularly 
good pun. All right, you ready? So then get it into more of a spin. That was a good entry. And it recovers just by letting go of the sticks. Into low uh, settings on the rates now. Let's try a little bit of a Farnborough pass, shall we? I'm gonna do it this way. Full power pass, 4S, Gloucester Gladiator from Durafly. Oh, it really cooks now. You can keep it on like that if you want. There we go. I got it. A little bit of a farm to pass, a little bit of offset rudder. Nice. I'll keep the power on, ignore the timer. Plenty of flight time on this. You get in excess of eight minutes and do a full power pass, then close out this flight review. Full power Gloucester Gladiator from Durafly. Ah, oh, nice. A little bit of rudder. And we'll bring it round. My timer is really getting on my nerves. Apologies for that, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so now it's time to bring it in for landing. When you consider the landing, again, same as touch and go, you want to keep up the momentum. I flick it into mid rates on the elevator to give me a bit more authority. And you want to aim to get it, ideally a three pointer. You don't really want to land on the mains first. And get ready to flare, 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 flare. Yes, like that. And then flick into high rate just at the very end to make sure that it doesn't nose over. So now I'm going to taxi back ground. Um, again, I'm in full up elevator on high rates. And you can see it just about handles this tall wet grass well. So when this grass is short, it's not going to be a problem at all. And of course, if you're flying off of hard surface, it's really not going to be a, uh, a problem at all. Maybe you've got some uh, desert-like strip where you fly and you can reenact the Malta days or the North African days of the, the infamous Gloucester Gladiator. So there it is. This is the... Durafly 1100 uh, millimeter span plug and fly Gloucester Gladiator. I hope you enjoyed this flight review. If you're looking for an unusual and rarely modeled warbird, definitely check out the Gladiator. If you like biplanes and are looking for an unusual looking version of a sports biplane, you can see the Durafly Gladiator has it all at knife edges and does all kinds of aerobatics very, very well. Very non scout but it's got great variety, this model. So it'll be available in all the major warehouses and parts will be available too. Please check out our uh, reviews from our um, other reviewers that uh, help uh, our company a lot with their reviews on their YouTube channels. Um, we'll have a list for those videos underneath the uh, product description on our website on the video tab. A manual for the model is available as well if you scan the quick setup guide that you get with the model or you can go directly to the listing and click on the files tab for the manual there. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you soon for another release from Hobby King at some point in the near future. Bye-bye.